Leslie Cornwell, Certified Nurse Midwife with Midwifery Business Consultation and Empowering Midwifery Education. I always forget to add both those companies now. So Dr. Jill has um, been an amazing connection I made when I was starting to look for instructors to interview for Empowering Midwifery Education. She's literally got the, the most wealth of knowledge for someone her age that I've ever met, and she's just so sweet and kind. So Jill is going to be joining our instructor team and helping out with making some amazing courses. The first one she's working on is the mental health component, but Jill, tell us a little bit about yourself, and thank you for joining me today. Okay. Well, thank you for inviting me, and I'm very excited to be part of EMA. Um, so I'm a perinatal epidemiologist, um, and for those of you who don't know, although with COVID lately, everyone's heard the word epidemiologist. Um, so I'm a public health doctor, and um, essentially a public health doctor that identifies and reduce, reduces risk factors for adverse pregnancy outcomes, um, adverse infant outcomes, and maternal health. So that's my focus is really on the prevent, promote, protect, which is the, you know, big tenets of um, public health. <laughs> and so with my clinical focus, it's mostly been an applied epidemiology with the hands on um, improving interventions and implementing interventions to decrease the negative impact of events during pregnancy, um, neonatal period. So, you know, your newborns, your health, your mental health of your newborns, um, emotional, physical, social. I started out with midwifery. So, I mean, that, that's really what got me into it. Um, hence the maternal perinatal focus of the epidemiology. Um, I also have a background in, uh, I'm certified as functional, certified functional medicine and clinical trauma specialist. And so I've kind of brought that into the aspects of perinatal mental health and um, and health and wellness. Very cool. Well, you mentioned briefly that you started this journey with midwifery, and I know I've seen a little bit in your bios and things. Um, did you get partway through the school? Like, kind of tell us that midwifery journey and how it sidelined into this totally other direction. <laughs> um, well. As much as it seems like another direction, um, the best thing about it is that it's kind of, they're all stepping stones into where I went. So with um, being a perinatal epidemiologist, it has not just, you know, the infectious disease aspect of it, it's got psychology aspect of it. And of course, it's got everything that I learned in midwifery school. Um, and I started, I actually started in 1990. I was only 14 years old. Um, I was a healthcare explorer and I was working at Mountainside Hospital and helped to catch my first baby in 1990. And just kinda, it's something that I had always been interested in, which is why I signed up for this Explorer program when I was in high school. I was anxiously awaiting until I can turn 14 because you're not allowed to before, get the working papers and everything here in New Jersey. And um, I had been, God, since I was, it was second grade. So what do you eat in second grade? Mm -hmm. I did um, a report on being a neonatologist. I wanted to be a neonatologist. Very cool. Um, yeah. And most of my graders actually know what a neonatologist is. Second like, graders. What... Yes, yes. I, I yeah, nobody knew. And if you ask them, yes. <laughs> my, uh, I, I had a very focused family on um, health and mental health. And my grandfather was a, an anesthesiologist and a psychologist. Mm -hmm. So that's he, an interesting combination. It is. Yeah. Well, he was in the, he was in the army. Um, so he and my Nana were both, um, you know, medical and uh, medical army um, physician. And <laughs> he, after seeing all of that stress and that, death and you know especially as an anesthesiologist i mean he dealt with a lot of you know in the war world war ii um and so he went back to school after and got his phd and um practiced as a psychologist very cool so that kind of inspired me so mm -hmm. again you know that that was something that i you know i again took that inspiration and decided to run with it plus i like babies so you know as a little kid i was like this is great i want to do this i want to be you know a doctor dealing with babies 
Um, and so then at 14, I started that Explorer program. It was fantastic. Um, I was in labor and delivery and I was there for about three years, almost three years. And then when I was um, 18, after I graduated high school, I got into midwifery school and that was, I mean, it's 94. So not a lot of computer stuff, but um, <clears throat> Ancient Arts Midwifery Institute actually had a distance type program. And so it was still it was correspondence at the time. So I applied and I got accepted and I got this big box of all these like papers and books and, you know, Awesome. things to like learn with and I decided to you know dive into that so I moved from Jersey to Connecticut and I started um, actually teaching preschool while I was because I wanted to do something while I can like you know go to middle free school um I so I did that and I got about two years into the program and I started doing apprenticeships there um and then the third year into the program I I actually had a complete turnaround um, when one of the midwives that I was practicing with, apprenticing with, one of my preceptors, got arrested. Mm. So I said, okay, you know what, I'm going to take a step back from this um, and focus on other things in school. Um, so I actually took, I put my midwifery career on hold and uh, focused on um, psychology in undergrad. And the reason that I focused on that was because I saw that with the last couple of years that I had been working with moms, the, the midwives were great as opposed to a lot of the obstetricians, but even the midwives, there was a lot missing with mental health. And I get kind of frustrated me. And because I had that that little turnaround with my preceptor getting arrested, I decided, okay, you know what, maybe I will focus a little bit more on the psychology and the mental health aspect and then kind of bring it into midwifery that way. And so that's what I did for several years. Um, I got my bachelor's degree in um, behavioral and mental health. And then I moved to Washington, DC and I, that's, where I met my uh, first husband and started working a little bit more back on the, the medical side um, because I just missed it. I missed the physical aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so then being in DC for a little while, I decided to go to grad school. Um, I was really interested in public health so, but I wanted to still focus on, you know, the maternal child aspect of it. So I went for um, an MPA in public health and program management, because um, I was in Washington, and it, it kind of yep. fit. Um, so with, with my program, with my MPA, I ended up focusing on, again, maternal health um, for public health. And I started um, an internship at NIH hmm. and yeah, I mean, it, it was incredible. And the thing that I loved about being in the DC metro area is that there were a lot of opportunities um, on like the top of health and science. And, you know, there were working in federal health was the highlight of my career. And I went from the master's into a doctorate, my doctorate. Um, I did a pre-doc at NIH, NICHD, which is the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. And I was one of the few people that were accepted um, for this pre-doc opportunity. And it was incredible. And then I ended up doing a postdoc there. And several years later, got into, still with federal health, um, I got into, Walter well, Reed Army Institute of Research. And with Walter well, Reed, it was more of a focus on the public health side and not the maternal side, but that got me into infectious diseases. When I decided, you know what, I wanna do even more with public health. Um, so I am going to get my DRPH. So I, at that 
point, I decided to focus on the doctor of public health um, with my concentration as perinatal epidemiology. And, you know, kind of got thrown into that. And interestingly enough, in the army, it's kind of ironic, but um, I also got thrown headfirst into humanitarian medicine and mm -hmm. tropical medicine and global health. And, you know, all my passions were ignited. Um, and so I took that, you know, worked there for years and I worked um, as a program manager for the operational clinical infectious disease course. And we worked with people from all over the world. And I took that experience with me um, when I moved back to New Jersey several years later and started to focus kind of everything with from the midwifery previously into the you know, the public health aspect of it, and then taking the psychology aspect and putting that into it and, you know, making this whole package. Because, you know, when you think about it again, you know, with, with epidemiology, especially maternal child, you're looking at things that can reduce the risk um, of adverse outcomes. And so that includes the psychology aspect it includes the infectious disease aspect you know it, it includes you know physical mental put together um and so it was something that i was able to pull into a package and enjoy you know instead of just being a little piecemeal um i did well and I, I think public health in general it's just it's it's kind of like midwifery it's like we're not just catching babies we're um caring for the mom the newborn like okay the partner is still a huge part of it whatever capacity in the support network and the the thoughts right. about birth i mean it's such a or how have they been eating and like is this number one baby and comorbidities and like you said infection so i think midwives are very yep. similar like you you fit perfectly and we we so. wear so many hats under one and we have to have answers quickly or decision making quickly in yep. that that realm yep. so which actually reminds me um so when i was at well to read i actually went back to midwifery school again um i couldn't keep away from it and i got accepted as an advanced placement student at ihm which is the institute of holistic midwifery in virginia so i did um a another almost two years as an advanced placement student um and when i finished that school i was actually working um with another preceptor there who actually became a very good friend of mine um and then unfortunately moved out of the area but i did as well but you know i caught some babies with her um i worked with her she is an apprentice she liked interns so i i, I did um midwifery internship with her for a couple of years and you know caught babies not just in hospitals but you know also lots of home births so i mean that was the main um both i hadn't mentioned but both ihm and a um, a m i <laughs> um institute no Amer whatever both of them <laughs> yeah all were, the, the yeah the, the, they were both uh cpm focus schools so i had that balance because of that with the more structured Natural the government system the regulatory side yeah you had a nice Correct. compliment of seeing so, both sides mm -hmm. right right and i liked that and i liked the fact that i had like you know a lot of the direct entry midwifery focus as well as the stuff that i learned in the hospital from being a public health doctor you know working with um you know different types of medicine with uh, later having going going on to get my um, IMZ, which is a doctor of indigenous medicine, learning different types of cultures and different healing aspects, and you know everything from um, you know Hawaiian birth culture and learning about um, standing in the waves to help relax the mothers to give birth. Um, you know, yeah, to, I can see all my brain is doing oh is taking gosh. notes of all these awesome courses you're going to make for incredible. Yeah. yeah, like I just, 
it, it's, and I think the whole point of you and I have talked about it on the sidelines, like creating empowering midwifery education, it's not just teaching yeah. the typical things that you're taught in midwifery school. What are all these little ounces of gems that we used to be taught from apprenticeship? We used to be taught from the granny midwives and the generational midwifery yes. that is getting lost in these little, I just, yeah. So I, 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 I'm so excited to have you on the team because there's so much wealth of knowledge you have to pull from that midwives and just in, in balance balancing that if they want to do policy and regulatory changes, you understand both sides very, very well. And I, and I enjoy that. And I like the fact that, you know, I, I have that experience and it may seem like, you know, I'm kind of all over the place, but as I said before, I like how they're all different, like focusing on all different aspects to bring together for the, you know, perinatal. Well, and I think that's why you and I get along so well, because the same thing, <laughs> like doing consulting and then also starting a, an online continuing education company and being a midwife in private practice. Like I'm that right. same boat, part but of it it's our personality, together. but it all has a purpose. Like they all have the core theme of what you want to do. We don't become midwives so much for the catching babies. It's the empowerment, it's the advocacy. Like we have a core theme to all of us, but maybe we have a different direction. Like you said, you you were starting midwifery school and then your preceptor went to jail and you said, okay, I'm seeing a need. I'm going to support the midwives and the midwives and the backdrops. And so that's why you I and I have very similar, like I saw massive needs with the business education. I saw massive needs of these semi-retired midwives that had such wealth and knowledge that aren't very tech savvy to make online courses. So like you see these needs and then you just are like, okay, I'm going to fill it. I'm going to adapt. I'm going to evolve. And, um, and so yeah, you and I are very similar walk around stories too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so Jill, like, I'm very curious because I know you've talked about all the things you're working on and you have worked on. Like, I, I, I'm afraid to even ask you, like, what are your next big dreams? What are the next big projects you want to work on? Because it seems like you're always a continuous learner. You're always a growing and expanding kind of person. Absolutely. I, I, I love learning. Um, you know, I, as I continue on in whatever I'm doing, I always like to add another aspect to it. Um, you know, I, I'm teaching in a university, um, I'm an adjunct at several universities actually, and I enjoy it so much that I do want to focus on that. But next big steps, I mean, definitely EME. Um, yeah. you know, <laughs> not just to kind of throw up. that in yeah. there, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we'll, te we'll, we're, we'll tease them. There's some really exciting things we're going to come out with the next couple oh of years. Oh my gosh, so. yeah. yeah. But I like yeah. the fact that like you and I have that same mind mindset when it comes to this plus the fact that you know not only am i like obsessed with education for myself i just think that everybody should be learning things because everything that you learn can help you become you know better of what you are so even if yeah. it's like you know you already have a lot of people say you know i already have a degree i already have this i don't need to like no but there's so much to medicine. I mean, that's my, my passion. But I, think that's medicine our culture. I mean, I had to reframe my mindset because like we are taught, you get through this grade, you get your degree, you're done learning. Okay. You get this, like, yeah, you do your continuing education, but the mindset is I'm going to do the bare minimum. I have to, because I'm too busy. It's not, I think it's that shift of trying to get the next generation and, and ourselves. Like I had to shift, like you're always learning, just get over this Leslie. And the more yeah. you learn, the faster you make mistakes, the better you're going to be like we are. So it's that whole educational structure of you. You don't, if you work together as a team, you're cheating. If you um, make a mistake, it's a really bad thing. Like when you become a business owner and you become in real life, your head gets turned upside down about the educational process and what it's supposed to be like. So um, I love, I mean, since I had my life crisis in 2017 and had a massive mind shift, like I absolutely love learning. And I never used to do that. I used to never read for fun. I never used to read about psychology or history or all these other aspects because I just do the bare bones for my profession and my needed um, narrowed skill set versus seeing how much benefit understanding negotiation, understanding leadership skills, understanding all these other aspects of subject matters have massive impacts on your outcomes and how you can advocate for midwifery that you just don't even think about. Right. I mean, it, it's a whole other paradigm. You know, you feel like my whole life has been part of like, you know, learning is my life. And it, it's interesting because what you had mentioned about like kind of do the bare minimum, that's my son, not to call him out or anything, but I see this with a lot of people, like my daughter and my son are 
a perfect opposites when it's like that. And I've explained to them how it's like, it's a lifestyle. You know, it's like learning is a universe. You know, it's, it's what I do. Yeah. And it's not looking at it like, you know, I get from point it's A chore. to point it's B. A punishment. And then it's like, I have it. to do this. I have to do this. You're like, yes, I'm excited. I get right. to do this. It's exactly. Totally you know, it's mindset. like, it's a different perspective. Yeah. And I think with that perspective, not only does it not seem like a chore anymore, it's like that quote, you know, if you love what you do, you never do a day of work in your life. Exactly. Um, you know, exactly. And that's, the a big, thing. that's a big plug for being a business owner. I mean, I talk to <laughs> midwives all the time, like how many people independent contract, like you were talking about, you would never be able to have, if you had one job and you stayed there forever, you, you could try to propose and say, can we add this to the department? Can we change this? But if you weren't such a freelance spirit and entrepreneur, spirit on the inside you wouldn't like you wouldn't have all these opportunities be presented to you or have like like i felt that way too since i've shifted to what do i have to do to make money based on the structure of the american society and what the box of a stereotypical midwife does to what makes me happy what am i passionate about like i've honestly the last two and a half years not felt like i'm working a day in my life yes i work hard and i've got commitments and obligations but i wake up so excited because i get to do what i want to do just like you get to do what you want to do so um so that's the plug like challenging midwives inspiring them that you can be anything. There are so many needs for niche services, epidemiology, research, like don't ever feel like, like I, I hear so many midwives are embarrassed to call themselves a midwife if they're not currently catching babies. Like we should do a whole research study on this. Like this right. mindset of one, few people know what a midwife is, but then like, I, I hear it all the time where people are like, well, I'm not currently practicing midwifery. And I'm like, you are always a midwife. Don't you're ever say that. Um, but this mindset, if you're not catching a baby, we have so much to our scope and our passion and our services that we have to, I mean, and that's going to make a better world. I mean, if you want to do a clinic, a breastfeeding support, a niche research only, like that is being a midwife with woman. It's never in the term. So I always, I, you and I can have some, we can make a book psychology of midwifery. <laughs> I, know. I know completely. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, so yeah, so Jill, um, I am so grateful to have you. I know I was asking about future and like EME and we got into our passionate side conversations yep. we always have, but um, yeah, I, I'm excited to do multiple of these conversations and I'll put, I hope you don't mind. I usually put contact information for emails and reach out. So I, I want midwives to network. I want them post COVID. We've had limited contact. I mean, there are so many midwives just exhausted and burnout and pushing the limits of what a human being can physically do. And so so we're trying to create resources, tools, templates, support systems, advocacy. Like I've been doing more and more of my, I feel like my business coaching is starting to convert into life coaching. I'm like, okay, we need a subset service for this because I like to do it, but that's, there's just such a need for some of these things that oh, people yeah. aren't doing like life coaches for midwives, locum agencies for midwives. Oh my goodness. Like mm -hmm. how many midwives need a vacation and a break and there isn't yep. this supporting resource people feel like as midwives, they have to do everything because we don't have these business None. subset services existing. So yes, I, I wholeheartedly am excited about what you and I are going to create for midwives and provide more access to. Well, I'm quite excited myself. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Jill, you have a wonderful rest of the day and then we'll chat That's again great. in a couple months. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, bye.